Welcome to a Chat with Heart podcast. I'm your host, Christina Martin. I'm here to help guide heartfelt conversations with new and old friends I've met from just being alive or touring my music around North America and other parts of the world. I chat with people I feel a kinship with and that I genuinely believe we can learn from. Our personal stories have great power to heal, influence, and inspire. All we have to do is show up for the conversation. Just talk about it. We could shut it, we could break a dark day. If we just talk about it, we can cut away, we can make a better day. That's the cat. the cat is is horking. Uh, she we think she has asthma. Ugh. Dale and I recently welcomed a new family member. You can hear her uh, horking up in the background. Uh, her name is Mama, and she is about a one year old cat, a calico cat that we've adopted. Hello, my little heartbeat listeners. Welcome to season two of my podcast, A Chat with Heart. I've got some great friends scheduled to chat this season and and some new friends too. If you're just tuning in for the first time, I have a heartbeat hotline you can call. Use it to ask me any question, pitch ideas for the podcast, for topics or guests, or just leave a comment. I even encourage prank calls, but nobody's taken me up on this opportunity yet, but there's still time. Call the heartbeat hotline, one 902 669 Four seven six nine. That's one nine zero two six six nine. Grow, and know that your message may be used on this podcast or on my social media. So I'm excited. Lots has been going on. Life's not boring. I launched a new song recently, which you'll hear at the end of season two episodes. It's called "I Don't Want to Say Goodbye to You," and uh, I actually wrote this many years ago, and I, I wrote it about you know, my, my kind of ongoing love, uh, and interest for traveling abroad and working abroad, um, specifically overseas, even more specifically, uh, in, uh, Germany. So I'm preparing for my new album storm launch. That's also new. And I launched an Indiegogo campaign so you can pre-order my new digital album, CDs, vinyl, that's right, I said vinyl. And get this, custom puzzles and temporary tattoo packs. Now at the time of this episode, which is November, 2022, I'm hoping to reach my campaign goal by December 1st, but I set that deadline really because I wanted people to be able to order the custom puzzles and tattoos and to be able to ship them out that first week of December so that you can get them in time for the holiday season. The music won't be out until next year. Uh, for this new album, Storm. Uh, I also have a new holiday single, and it's called Reason to Celebrate. You can find it on my Bandcamp or all the places that you stream music. So the pre-orders with the new album, Storm, these these help me with the cost of manufacturing, merch, CDs, vinyl, and um, you can find that link to pre-order on my website, christinamartin.net, or on any of my social media pages. Okay, let's dive into season two. I am thrilled to have two wonderful humans as my guests today on the podcast. Michael S. Ryan, award-winning musician and songwriter, and Kristen Harrington, prolific abstract artist, have been adventuring as a couple for the past decade. They began creating art together in 2019, with Harrington developing a painting for every song from Ryan's first solo album, From the Bottoms of Our Murky Hearts. You and me is their first co-authored book that brings a hilarious collection of short stories from their lived travel and relationship experiences. The couple co-hosts a podcast, Mike and Kristen, where they share chats about following dreams, life as artists, and uh, how to wander the unbeaten path. They live in Halifax, Nova Scotia with their cat, George, and a revolving cast of fosters from the SPCA. Okay, that was the perfect bio they sent me 
I could not improve upon it except to say that I'm a fan of both of their work and their book, You and Me. I just finished reading it. It made me laugh out loud every single chapter. It also inspired me to finally book an upcoming trip to Austin, Texas to visit old friends and attend a songwriting workshop. So thank you, Mike and Kristen. Hello. Hi, Mike and Kristen. Hey. I'm really pleased that you said yes to this. You could have said no. no. We wouldn't dream of it. As soon as you said we didn't have to shower, I was like, yeah, we can do that. I really took it to heart, too. You you also just went and changed your pants. So. <laughs> I know that nobody's looking, but I feel like I should not have sweatpants on at least. Like, bare minimum, not wear sweatpants. So Absolutely. I met that. I have jeans. I'm wearing jeans. You're wearing jeans. Well, that's actually the only thing I want people to see is our pants. So <laughs> at one point, I will have you stand. We'll do a screenshot. Of course. <laughs> of course. That's, that's going to be the promo image yeah. that we use. And Yeah. Okay. I'd like to see your pants. They're like high-waisted sort of yoga pants. Since the pandemic, I think they, they pass as like fashion pants. Like I might even be able to play a show in them if it was like yeah. not yes. online. Um, listen, this is really exciting. I think for me, I, I don't know about for you, you can tell me, but you're, um, get going to be guest one season two, first guest of season two. Uh, so congratulations. And, uh, I didn't think we would, I didn't know if we would keep, you know, doing a podcast. Um, so I'm really pleased that you are the first and, uh, I want to take you back. I want to take you both back to your younger days. You know, to, to start off, okay. I want, to, I want to ask you both if either of you have a memory of like that first moment in your life, maybe as a child, uh, maybe it was older, where you created something and you were like, oh my goodness, I love this feeling. I made this thing. I made somebody else happy, but more so it made me happy. I lost myself. Like, do either of you have? I like that moment. I remember being a kid, like pretty young, like, I don't know, like three and a half feet tall, however old you are at that age, at that size. Uh, and I was at my grandmother's place and she had a piano there. And I just sat at the piano and like I, I hit like one key and then I just moved my hand around. And I hit another key that's made sounds that sounded good together like whoa those two keys work and then i started just moving my hands around just finding just combinations of keys that sounded good together and i obviously didn't know anything about music or the creative process in any way but the the sounds i was making myself really made me feel good like i i had probably even hadn't really listened to music at that point in my life either just because i was just a little kid but i remember just placing my hands in certain ways that made really pleasing sounds to me and they probably weren't pleasing to everyone else in the house at the time but right. that was kind of my first experience with music and it just kind of awakened something in me do you have a moment like that kristen I do. And it's funny because I haven't really been asked this before, so I haven't thought about it, but something came immediately <laughs> to mind. So I think I'll just run with that one. And I grew up in a farming community, so we weren't really able to go out and just play with our friends. Like there weren't a bunch of kids around. So I had to make believe a lot. And I used, we had a set of stairs with that old gold shag carpet that I think all of our parents had in our younger years. I used to sit at the top of our stairs and pretend that I was on a train in New York. And I'd take like one of my dolls and a book and would be very swanky and formal is how I imagined myself. And it was really a feeling of like, I really felt like this was my destiny. This was my future. Like, I would be this success story coming from the smallest of towns and make it in New York. So it was less about maybe something I made and more about the feeling I had because it was so real. Like, it's still very vivid. And I was maybe five or six. So 
I love that. And now you, we ride the subway in New York. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you've been to New York, you've been all over the world. And I'm, you know, I'm going to dive into this a little bit later. I'm holding for, uh, for listeners. You have a hard I'm, copy. Oh, yeah. I roll her over we, here. We don't yeah. have one ourselves, actually. Oh, do, do you need to borrow this one? I'm almost <laughs> done. For listeners, I'm holding the hard copy of you and me, apparently the only one in existence. We're going to talk about more about this later. Okay, back yeah. to the magic moments. Uh, or, you know, just as a kid, like kind of discovering that you have this ability to tap into something and roll with it. And our imagination is is a part of that. And Kristen, you were saying that you imagined yourself in New York as a little girl, but I imagine maybe you thought maybe you would be older. I was job. a grown up. Yeah, I was a yeah. grown up. And, and I was much more refined than I appear in this moment. You need to do a better job manifesting this. No, no, you. No one's going to see this. Remember, so we. Um, but you look fabulous. Um, so yes, you've traveled all over the place. But uh, we're going to get to that. But you have a website for each of yourselves, and then you have one that I. I love this. It's like together, and I. I just really love how you have, as a couple, really committed to championing. Is that a word? Championing. Yeah. That's it. You got it. I did it. You champion each other in a way that maybe like most couples don't. How much thought went into like how you were going to present yourselves and your art together and and separately? Well, we do so many different things. It, It can kind of be confusing to the audience. So we did have to put a lot of thought into how we would market ourselves because I also have my band, then I have a solo project, and uh, and Mike and Kristen. So, and I treat them all separately in a way, but they all influence each other. Like maybe someone who listens to my band, The Town Heroes, will find uh, our podcast, Mike and Kristen, or will come across our book, or like the music I create there, and come across my solo music. So, I don't really love having to promote and direct people to all these different things. Like I just sometimes wish like, Hey, I'm a musician. This is what I do right here. But I also love doing all the things that we do. So it's, it's definitely necessary. I think like, I'm not going to say, okay, I'm not going to write because it's too confusing for the audience. Like, I want to write and I love writing. So I am going to make that a part of what I do. And as far as Mike and Kristen is concerned, we we are still trying to figure out exactly what we are. We know we wrote a book together. We know we host a podcast together. The, it co- becomes a little confusing marketing ourselves. Like we run into someone like, hey, what do you guys do? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a musician. <laughs> I also write books. I'm a songwriter. Sometimes sometimes I do co-writes with people. And my wife and I host a podcast. And uh, she's an artist. And she also works with upholstery designing. (laughs) (laughs) And and you do custom pieces. And and then you do live shows together. And and then by then, they've already walked away. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, yeah, we're creative people. (laughs) Let me me interject and say that... (laughs) When I went to MikeandKristen.ca, I wasn't confused. I thought that you, um, you know, spelled it out really clear for everybody. Yeah. And I like that, you know, because as, as somebody who at times has tried to do many different things too, like, and you are kind of told sometimes, don't confuse people. You should only do one thing. Well, anyway, I think you found a way to lay it out really well. And I'm sure it's always evolving, but... I'm very impressed and I, I can be overwhelmed easily. So I liked it. I like what you're doing. It's been advantageous for both of us to have one another for guidance or editing copy, taking photos, like all of these things are helpful tools to have in one another in a partnership. But I agree with Mike. It's more the outward facing part that we grapple with in having two, three, four, accounts, websites, newsletters, all of these things. So you're you're also kind of dividing your audience where if you were able to pool all of those fans or followers together, you have that wider audience as a collective as well. It's just navigating and separating, but it's like you're saying, it's constantly evolving. And I'm sure 
you being in a partnership with a creative person, you have that understanding as well, where it's great because you can bounce things off of one another. They understand your lifestyle. Uh, like that alone is huge. Having somebody understand how it feels to be an artist, how you might think a little bit differently, how your day to day looks different, how your weekends are a bit crazier than most. It's not always just about relaxing. Like these are our big work times. So having that in common is great. Um, but yeah, we have a lot on the go. So it's trying just to be clear about who we are and what we stand for, what we make when our shows are, <laughs> all and this I, stuff. And I think to us, like it makes perfect sense. Like this is our life. We're doing today, we're gonna go do photos and work on things that we can post online. Tomorrow, Kristen's gonna do video of me in the studio, uh, doing a performance video. And like to us, our life makes perfect sense and everything is laid out like awesome. We nailed it. But it's just it's more just uh in conveying that to other people. Like we just mm-hmm. wanna try to make it as clear as possible but we understand that it might not be right away. Part of why we started the podcast too, or one of the reasons, because we found that there still is a little bit of misunderstanding of what an artist does. Like, what does, what's your job? What does your life look like? And so we wanted to create a bit of a platform, much like you're offering to just give a bit of explanation to what this looks like. And, get fewer emails asking if you want to donate something for the sake of exposure. Like these types of commonalities that we all can kind of nod our head like, yeah, that's happened and that's okay. It's just giving a little bit more clarity around what we do. Cause like Mike's saying, like to us, this makes sense. Like yeah. getting up and doing our thing. But um, yeah, there's still a little bit of mystery out there around <laughs> what our lives look like. Yeah, it's, you're doing a great job of demystifying. I was listening to the podcast while we were spending hours um, painting uh, our cold room yesterday. And when I went out for a oh. walk today, um, yeah, you had a great, uh, a good friend of, a uh, mutual friend of ours, Stephanie Purcell on. Uh, many great guests, everybody. Uh, I'm going to point everybody to the podcast, obviously the book and your websites, but Um, I want to go back to the book because I do want to say I haven't read a lot of books in a while, any books in a while that have made me laugh out loud like it's done. And I just I I really appreciate it. I'm not done it yet, um, but I'm going to finish it this week. But I wanted to ask you, since the release of this book, what kind of uh, connections have you made that were kind of unexpected? And yeah, since since launching. Well, it's it's kind of a, a new world for us because I've released a bunch of albums before and I know what the process of releasing an album is and where it's going to take me and the people I'll likely encounter. And Chris has done art shows and has done lots of events where she's put herself out there. But putting a book out is a completely new experience for both of us. And we kind of didn't really have any idea where the page was. Or what we were doing. That's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> and the the biggest thing is just hearing from people, whether it's people we know or strangers or whatever, saying almost exactly what you said, that they laughed out loud during it. And the whole idea of this book was to write something that was just easy to consume. Mm -hmm. and because we wrote it during the pandemic we started two weeks before the pandemic hit uh we we were in los angeles on the the venice pier and we had this massive dream to to write a book and do this giant tour promoting it all around north america we train across canada take the pacific coast highway down to la again go across route 66 the whole time promoting this book that we didn't even write a word yet for and then go to Costa Rica for four months and so we started the next day we went to a cafe in Venice and just started writing and uh, we came home and with a head of steam just fully fully uh head first into the writing process and then the pandemic happened which was kind of good in a way because we were just we have all this time to create so we just wrote like crazy 
and and yeah, it's since the release, we had this massive plan to tour it like that, but we obviously weren't able to do that. Uh, but we were able to do readings and just just like going to bookstores and meeting people that's that run little small businesses. Yeah, you never know who you're going to encounter with art because it mm-hmm. takes or brings people into your life that would not be there otherwise. We yeah. delivered, I don't know, it was maybe 20 or 30 books to an elderly couple in Cape Breton last weekend who they run some kind of online book exchange. Yeah, they're they're publishers. Yeah, like they're they're very well established, but I I define them as elderly because it kind of, it made me giggle because she, the, the wife of this couple said, oh, I was laying in bed the other night laughing out loud reading your book. And I thought this is so great that you're finding humor in our stories and we also have had teenagers say the same thing and so it's been a little surprising in the best way to see that it has this breadth of people that can find the humor in it and understand and appreciate that we've written it in this kind of way and it's it kind of worked out for us in the sense that during the pandemic like well people were kind of on edge and stressed and like we we had already planned like oh we want to write this funny book about our misadventures and shitting our pants and stuff and uh who doesn't want to write that book? just because kind of the i don't know you, you see a pretty big divide in people now and yeah there's just a lot of things in the world that separate us and we wanted to just do something that's maybe brought people together or at least just made people just take a break. Yeah. You're less self-conscious. You're just willing to just put your hair down as they say. Um, And yeah, once the pandemic happened, we kind of really wanted to lean into that a little bit even more. So I don't think it like dictated how we, how we wrote the book or anything, but we realized that, okay, this is something that people can maybe used right now and it's Mm -hmm. it truly was like people wrote us saying oh yeah i was going through a hard time over the last while and it's just i separated for a moment and that's ultimately what we wanted from people yeah the the um travel tips are quite handy and i i thought of one that um I don't think you're going to follow. <laughs> but, uh, my travel tip would would be uh, maybe stop eating things that give you the shits. Is that hard to avoid when you're in some of the places that you travel? Like I, yeah. I play it pretty safe. Like I don't go to too many exotic places, so I've never had some of these amazing experiences that you've had. So I guess I'm missing out, but that would be one of my travel tips. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good tip. I had good. an old boss actually who adopted his son from Thailand, which is one of the places that we traveled and talk about in the book. And he, I remember him telling me that he ate at McDonald's the entire time he was there for this very reason. So he wouldn't get sick, but I was just devastated for him to think that how could you travel to Thailand with this incredible food and live off McDonald's, but he yeah. didn't have the same <laughs> issues we did. So I guess the joke was on me. I remember in Thailand after like a, a good stint of street food and random meats you've never seen and super spicy stuff. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I, I need, <laughs> I need a cheeseburger. I need yeah. something normal. Air yes. quote. Yeah, and we came across it, it had the most stereotypical name. It was like America Cheeseburger or something. Oh, we have to go there. <laughs> we just that will went, not give us the shits. Yeah, ran in and got like <laughs> cheeseburger and fries, and like, oh, this is perfect. Like, I, I love Thai food, but eventually we always end up craving cheeseburger and French fries. Yeah. Like that oh, must yeah. be some type of the ultimate comfort home food. Yeah, we um, ended a Europe tour one time in Berlin. Uh, with two, I had, it, we were taking a flight back home the next morning and that night, probably 1 a.m., uh, I'd had two Big Macs uh, okay. and some fries. I was so happy, no regrets. That was how I ended that tour. 
Um, and now we're vegan. However, the Impossible Burgers are, are quite tasty. Yeah. So we're very, we've just newly discovered um, that the fast food places like a &W, uh, Burger King have the um, yes. plant-based option. So we're very excited about this. And I'm somebody who does not eat fast food very often, but like, <laughs> it's so fun when we do. Like it's oh, yeah. like date night for us. It's huge. Touring must be a challenge. You know, I, I'm not sure if you did much touring yet since you've been vegan, but that must be definitely a challenge on the road. We, we turned we turned vegan, I suppose, just, uh, yeah, halfway through a Canadian tour, and then we went to Europe. And you know what? Actually, across Canada, we found that every three to four hours, there was like an industrial park that had either a plant-based bowl at, um, I'm not going to be sponsored by them, but I, um, Boston Pizza or a Freshie, that new franchise, well, new yes. wish, not really, Freshie. Uh, and that would, you know, would uh, be fine until like the next big city where there might be um, some more options or just a better like grocery store. And then in Europe, I didn't find it a, an issue at all. Yeah, but... You struck me as uh, as two people that really know how to live life to the fullest. And I, I did want to ask you, like, if you had any tips for for relaxing. I need I always need reminders like I don't it's hard as an artist, an entrepreneur, even um, self-employed person to stop working, to shut it off. So, hmm. you know, between the book, the podcast, the music, uh, the art, how running it all, your bookkeeping, all this stuff, like, what do you guys do to just shut off? Can you? Uh, this is a hard question, mm -hmm. really, because, yeah, it's it just magnifies. We struggle with this as well. Okay. And maybe it's something that, like you're describing, entrepreneurs or artists in particular do. Funny, it w it's traveling that really allows us to separate. And I know we've just talked about coming up with this idea and starting a book on one of our trips, but... Yeah. No, yeah. I think we need to almost completely remove ourselves from our work environment to completely have that downtime. And I've recently transitioned out of a nine to five lifestyle that I've had for a number of years into being a full time artist. And I've yet to establish a schedule or a routine that builds in a day off completely. I, I don't really know. And part of it is for good reason in that I just enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah. So I don't, it doesn't feel like work all the time or I, I just don't mind putting that effort in. But we really have to make a conscious effort to decompress and relax, I would say. Yeah, and I, I think finding things where we can almost separate completely like, and again, even like if I'm reading something, I feel like I can't separate because I'm analyzing the structure of sentences. Like if I'm listening to music, I'm looking at the, how the song breaks down. Like if it's something that has been created by another creative person, it's not the best. I like sports. <laughs> yeah, I like to go yeah. punch a heavy bag or exercise because it's completely allows me to completely separate mm -hmm. from being this creative moron mm -hmm. who just obsesses over things. Yeah. And yeah, just I guess things that are out of my comfort zone. Like we we started doing well I, I guess I started when I was a kid, but doing like uh, cold dips. I love, we were in today, I was just in the ocean for 10 minutes, just looking out at the surroundings and just, I come out and I just feel so alive. But in that time, you completely separate. You're not thinking of... Uh, yeah, we have to torture our bodies. To <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what it or sounds what? like. I, I don't think I could, I would do that. Um, <laughs> but that's, yeah, I would be thinking, how am I going to survive this 10 minutes? It's so fucking cold. It makes you present. Yes, it keeps um, you in that moment. But I don't know if I'd say relaxing. Afterwards is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's different like mindfulness things that's, we we try together individually. Like I've been struggling with meditation for for years, trying to get to a point where I like I know everyone says, "Oh, it's so good for you. you have to do it." And I always go through spurts where I I experiment with it, but I've never really gotten to a point where I have a practice that I'm like, "Oh, I'm gonna meditate today and I'm gonna feel awesome." 
I just keep doing it because people say you should. <laughs> <laughs> One day, yeah. feel the benefit. One, right. Just, hey, seriously, though, with the meditation, because I, I, I'm kind of on and off again uh, as well. But I do notice when I do it, there's a difference in my day. Um, I think a lot of it is just about having that consistency built in as well. So you might not have a meditation and experience this euphoric feeling, but it's it's that you showed up for yourself that day. Yeah. And that's been a big part of, I guess, relaxing, but really just our m- mental health and well-being in general. And Mike and I are lucky that we both really enjoy taking care of our bodies. Like we, we enjoy exercising. We enjoy cooking good food and eating well. And we spend a lot of time researching and practicing different things. So while sitting for 30 minutes in meditation might not be the thing we do every single day, I think we both do some form of, I'll call it self-care wellness. So it might be journaling. Um, I practice yoga regularly Uh, We do a lot of walking and hiking, just time spent in nature, the cold dips. We take our vitamins, like all of these things are important to us. And I really find it's when I get out of that routine that I experience how much it's positively impacting me. Yeah. So I think there's something to be said about that too, is you don't always recognize the benefits until you're not in that routine any longer. Yeah. Love it. Shining. Um, I feel like we have a lot in common, uh, like as individuals and as a couples. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dale, although Dale's the one of us who does, I sort of let him do all the research now. I really, I'm just like, you know what, Dale will do it. I don't yeah, know tell me what to take. I'll take I, it. I ask him like what's going on in the world. Like I've got other stuff that I do that I'm responsible for, like taking out the trash, you know, and then he tells me what's going on? Like, are we, you know, should I be concerned about a nuclear war? Um, You should right now. Well, (laughs) he, he might, he might tell me otherwise. I'm going to listen to him, Mike. Uh, (laughs) Actually, some days he, he says what you said. And so I just go, you know, Wednesday, don't have to worry about nuclear war Thursday. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, but in terms of like, uh, he really gets into, um, you know, the, the vitamins that we, the supplements that we'll, we'll take. I mean, we try to get most of our, our stuff from food, but as vegans, we do have to take some supplements. Um, so I really leave that all up to him. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and my life is easier that way. I trust Ooh. him, but you know, if something happens to him, I'll probably, um, call you too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's perfect to have have the setup like that where you lean on each other for different things. And we, yes. we never like set us made a graph or, okay, I'm going to do this. Kristen's going to do that. But we definitely know what we each are good at or better at and what the other one doesn't like to do. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So it, it allows us to just help each other, compliment each other and, make make life easier just when we're we're both willing to help each other out and step up when the other isn't whatever knowledgeable or about something or know how to do something and the other one does we'll gladly step in oh i wonder if there's one thing that Kristen, you could tell me and mike you could tell me that you you don't know about each other. So Kristen, one thing about yourself that Mike doesn't know about you yet that you can say on the podcast, so he's finding out for the first time, and the same for you, Mike. Okay. And that way this experience will forever live in your brains as a time you learn something new about the other one. (laughs) And it can be embarrassing. Um, I will use it on the podcast, remember? So like, it has to be something that you're not going to get arrested for possibly mm-hmm. oh um, we oh not get arrested for okay that oh no wait maybe I, oh, no, I, I, I retract that i want to hear <laughs> i was actually going to tell a story about a time i shoplifted when i was oh little. yeah you could do that no I that's fine you. i don't I, think that i would have shared before because so this was like a phase in my life i was a good kid i was actually quite consumed and i'm reading nancy reagan's book right now and i know that she was a guest on your podcast as well and yeah. talked about this idea of 
perfectionism. And I too grew up in a political family where your behavior was on display and mattered. So I really connected to a lot of the stories that she shared, but I think it actually led to these moments of rebellion because you spend so much time just with this face outward facing um, perfectionism or, or seemingly wanting it to be that way, at least. So yeah, we do bad things that most teenagers, I guess, do at times. But I remember one time in particular, it was like at the It store that they used oh, to Oh, the It store, yeah. Day. They we just... had all these little trinkets. It was just so easy. And I had this yeah. pullover windbreaker with a zipper across the front that led to this big pocket. And I kind of just leaned over it with the pocket, with the zipper open and put a little thing of, I think it was perfume or maybe it was joke perfume if it was from the it store. It didn't matter what it was. Mm -hmm. It was just that I had done this thing and walking into the store and I never did it again. It didn't, it wasn't about, you know, okay, now I'm into this, but it was more about the act of rebellion. So (laughs) Mike's very uncomfortable. He's now, (laughs) now he's like, well, this is not the woman I married. What is going on? Yes, I married a criminal. There's (laughs) there's people like, there's people who get addicted to that. Like Winona Ryder was a shoplifter, like as a famous celebrity, like she just liked the thrill of it, I think. Conan O'Brien's assistant, Sona Mosesian, who has a book out as well uh, uh, right now um, about being the was it the world's worst assistant? Yeah, In any I, case, I, uh, she yeah. she was um, a shoplifter as well. So yeah, but you're gonna say, Mike? Go ahead. I'm no, no, you want my story? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah well, you're... In my eyes. <laughs> yeah. I'm addicted to it. I, every yeah. time you go into a store now, I'm just gonna have you're my eyes me. on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my. You want my story? Yeah, I think uh, I think Kristen does as well. I mean, I think okay, she wants to know uh, the real Mike. Bad thing. When I when I was uh, when I was little, I used to not know how to control my temper, and um, my brother, his favorite hockey player was Al McGinnis, and he had an Al McGinnis rookie card. And Uh-oh. I can't even remember what happened. I feel like I know where this I is going. I know where this is going. I can't oh. remember what happened, but I was mad at my brother and I ripped the rookie card in half. Whoa. <laughs> and you know what? It was good talking to you both today. And thanks for being on a chat with her. Uh, that's, um, did you, uh, I mean, how is your relationship now with your brother? And does it- Well... That's what you to say with each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, not concerned about you two. I'm concerned about his bro. Well, I think uh, he might have forgot about it. Now that he hears this and realizes that hockey cards are worth a lot now. Uh-huh. Uh, like, Wait a second. I remember that. That card would be worth my college tuition right now. But yeah, that was. I was only like five or six or something but uh mm. i i didn't when i got mad i just you know i didn't know what you were supposed to do these are more like confessions than mm. they are things you didn't know about each mm. other huh you heard it here folks on a chat with our podcast <laughs> pulled it out of us okay. yeah well you know i mean if anything else comes up later and you want to s- spill it that's great i um i think it feels good to confess confess um once you start hearing other people's like stories of the things they've done and then usually once you get going in a room full of people they get worse and worse and everybody wants to take another turn We're like oh wait i actually did something that was even more horrible <laughs> like egg the convent <laughs> okay i stole a car you guys. yeah <laughs> all right i murdered my uncle <laughs> oh. i was in ice sister in high school <laughs> oh boy so <laughs> So listen, I have a, <laughs> on that note, I have a, if you'd like to call the Heartbeat Hotline and uh, use it as a confessional <laughs> booth, that is A-OK with me. Just know that your comment will be played <laughs> on social media uh, and the world will find out about it. OK, I want to chat about the things that we've sacrificed to take on this path that we're all on uh, as an entrepreneurs, artists, self-employed. So what are some of the sacrifices you feel you've had to make? And then maybe you don't think of them as sacrifices, but I sure do sometimes. I feel when I first started and wasn't making really any money or generally being able to survive, 
Yeah. I had to sacrifice everything. It was like my friends are going out to a, a bar to have a drink. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not going to go there because I don't want them to feel sorry for me and like have to buy me a drink or whatever. It was just like a multitude of things like that where you're like, okay, I'm not going to eat pork chops tonight because I got to buy guitar strings. It was all the, it was all uh, monetary related stuff. Like mm-hmm. I'm not going to do this because I want to put in the time to get to a point where I'm going to be able to survive off what I'm doing. Yeah. So it was a total focus on building a skill set and getting to a point where yeah I'm 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 good enough to make money. So I'm going to have to sacrifice these things for now. Like even getting a car like early on like i don't know didn't didn't want to have a house like um to find the cheapest rent possible like live in a shithole find my mattress in the dumpster with blood stains hmm. on it someone else's um didn't know that about you either that needs to be in book number two just yeah. the things <laughs> we know, did a mattress from a dumpster in toronto yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it was just That's like disgusting. And- <laughs> I'm really concerned about what, what? kind of parasites you spray might still be nine. living with. Okay. Spray nine, though. What spray is spray nine? nine? It kills everything, including HIV, in nine seconds. Is this what you used on the mattress? But anyways, oh. th- those type of sacrifices. Yeah, okay. uh, <laughs> now Whoa. I I don't I don't feel like I'm sacrificing anything. Like there are things like. But to me, like, this is the life I wanted to create. This is, this isn't the easiest way to make money, I guess. Uh, mm. Like, if I wanted to have a bigger bank account, like, there's lots of things that I could do to get there quicker. Like, I still believe, like, yeah, there's lots of room for growth and the potential for things to happen. But... Yeah, I don't feel like I'm really sacrificing anything now. It's just, this is what I wanted to create. What about you, Kristen? Sacrifices? I mean, you're newly, you said, transitioned to full-time artist. Well, first of all, how's that been? And then, but let let me know about the sacrifices as well. I think the financial piece is one of the more obvious examples. Certainly for me, coming from the stability of a corporate gig that paid very well and provided uh, health benefits and a pension and all of these things. So it's, it's very relatable, I think, because we all understand the value of money. So it's very easy to measure this thing. But in exchange for that, I now have better health and freedom and authenticity. I have better connections with people. Like there's been so many wonderful things happen since making that transition, I guess at the sacrifice of that financial stability. But to me, I think all these other benefits, because they're a little bit harder to measure, we forget that they're in fact better than or have replaced that part of my life. So I, sure, I wish that there was a bit more of that consistency just for peace of mind. But like Mike, it doesn't feel like a sacrifice because I know what I'm getting in return. Yeah. I think for me, part of the initial sacrifice would be my social identity or acceptance, understanding. It's a little bit confusing, especially for those in generations before us to understand that, like I went to school and I got a master's degree and then I get a job in my field and I climbed the ladder and I, I was successful as far as most would be concerned, but I was unhappy. And so, you know, among other things, I was, it just made me not the best version of myself. And so I felt like there was a little bit of maybe judgment or, you know, you're crazy for making this decision or people will still even say to me now, like, you know, must be nice not working. Like, Uh and it just like, you know, my blood just boils. Uh It's just so insulting for it to be presented in that way. It's it's just, yeah. of course we're working. Of, of course I still have a job. It looks different than what it once was or what might be um, better understood. But so I, again, like sacrifice, yeah, but it also has come with just endless gifts of 
positive reward, benefit, all the good things. I love, love hearing this. Um, I heard you guys talk on your podcast about the documentaries they make, you know, but th there's, there's always something like about famous people, uh, musicians or whatever artists, but that there's always the missing bits that, you know, cause you're living the life mm -hmm. that you can't really put in a doc unless the doc's going to be like, you know, um, two years long. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was imagining when I was listening to your podcast, I was like, oh my goodness, like my doc would be eight hours of me sitting and, and trying to network and book shows on my computer silently, like no music <laughs> playing in the background. And like, and then the next day I'm doing my bookkeeping for a couple of hours and um, texting with, you know, the head bookkeeper at my accountants and asking questions again, all silently. It'd be like a silent film, really. Yeah. I don't even, there wouldn't even be music in it. Like, so I was, what are some things that you think might be in your documentary that are not glamorous like because this is about kind of you know lifting the veil on on our life like we yeah we create and it's it's why we do all this other stuff to get to the point where we can like lose ourselves in the flow and create and make connections and do what we love but it's so much more time it has to be spent doing the business stuff so i think a good opening would be uh sitting at a computer <laughs> Re reworking the opening line to a grant for ah. maybe 45 <laughs> minutes. Just oh my God, yes. The goal of this project, no. <laughs> no. This project will <laughs> propel Michael Stephen Rott, no. Um, reworking that would be a good opening. It's funny, my, oh my basketball coach from high school recently reached out to me and her daughter is now in grade nine and wants to be an artist and they have a job shadow day coming up in November and her uh -huh. daughter wants to job shadow me, which is very flattering, but I'm also like, what will I possibly do? Oh, that's work. <laughs> yeah, young yeah. woman that will be at all interesting, like other than just yeah. being in my studio, yeah. making something. Just, just take her in the studio. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> like let's just learn to paint. Like this yeah. is a, a oh. very small fraction of what I do, but the rest. Yeah. Thing... You're gonna turn her off. If you just, <laughs> if you bring her to your desk and be like, all right, we're gonna do bookkeeping today. Um, I need you to enter all these receipts. Um, we're gonna open up Simply Accounting. Don't fuck this up, kid. And, yeah, right. uh, you're not going to eat well, until this is done. So however long it takes, you know, I know. And it's, I think this is another one of those overlooked aspects of our lives as artists as well, because of course we're not posting or filling in our ledger on social media. Like that's not exciting or interesting whatsoever, but just put, put a sexy outfit on. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Sexy <laughs> outfit on. I truly believe the talents and your ability, what you do is maybe maybe 25% of it, the mm -hmm. rest, just the willingness to work hard, be persistent and not give up because there are so many talented people out there. And the reality is that no matter who you are or how good you are, you're going to hit a lot of roadblocks along the way. And a lot of people give up once they hit a number of those. And the people who succeed are the ones who are willing to just keep going no matter what like that the yeah. dream or the vision they have is what they're going to just keep focusing on no matter what setbacks come well that, that's what i think anyway because you know i hit a lot of setbacks and i just keep <laughs> pushing so that's yeah. what i tell myself and other people too but it also speaks to what we were saying earlier and how money is measurable but there have been so many experiences that we've had as artists that have been unique that would not they just wouldn't have happened otherwise so the people we've met and places we've traveled food that we've eaten like all of these things have been because we made the choice to live this lifestyle so and I don't know if you you're having this experience hosting podcasts but since we've started that platform and, and we've shared this openly on some of our episodes that it really started out more as a tool so let's get our product out there. This is another way to promote a show that's coming up or, and of course we wanted to profile and highlight other people that were in our peer group or creative world, but quickly learned just what a gift it was to share this personal time with other people. 
yeah, you make new friendships, you learn tricks of the trade. Like there's just so many other things about it that are awesome that that really has been, I think what keeps us motivated and persistent and consistent as artists. I know when, when you were leaving your job, you were a little worried, like you were thinking that we weren't going to get to travel anymore because yeah. part of our travel budget was the money you made from creating art on the side. Yeah. So then that becomes our full time, like our all our income is me playing music, Kristen making art. And we might not be able to afford whatever, going to Thailand for a month. But I want I tried to say that the opportunities that are gonna come because of this yeah. are so great and we have no idea where we'll end up. Like we can apply for a writing residency in Colombia and go to Colombia for a month. And that's exactly what we did the second yeah. she did the job. Amazing. So the 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 opportunities that come about when you're living a life like this, yeah, we we might not make as much as someone who works in the oil fields out west right now, but we have the opportunity to follow these paths that wouldn't come out otherwise. Mm-hmm. And we have no idea where they're going to take us, but that that's something we like. And some people might not like that at all. They want to be strict routine and just have everything laid out before them. But we like the the adventure and we like being out there and just seeing what life throws at us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we might not have enough money to pay for this, this round trip to go to Disneyland, do all these things, but we could apply to be artists in residencies in Orlando at a house that Jack Kerouac used to live in and uh, hang out in Florida for a month, you know? So the opportunities are there. It's just, you have to put in the effort to find them and just follow them when they happen. Yeah, I want to kind of end this. I don't want to end this conversation, but I want to end it with some um, moments like pivotal moments in your life for each of you that where you were like, oh, my goodness, the universe is conspiring with me here to support my path with heart. Like, because I think it's important that we listen to those things. And sometimes we we don't and, and we miss opportunities, you know, so like. Like when I was uh, living in Austin, there were a lot of those those things that were happening. But one day I showed up to work and my coworker, Pam, had collected 1500 US dollars from my coworkers to help me print my first CD. And I was like, that to me was like, well, I've, I have to do this now. Everyone is behind me. How can I not, when I didn't necessarily believe in myself enough, but then I was like, well, I mean, I guess I, I guess this is for real. Like people are giving me money now to do this thing. Do you have some moments that you care to share with our audience that will inspire them to? I think how our book actually came to be was felt really like there was something guiding it along the way. Cause, and I mentioned earlier, we were, we were in Los Angeles and we're on Venice pier and we were just sitting there and it was perfectly quiet. There was like a guy fishing beside us and the, stereo playing some classic rock and we were just talking about all the trips that we'd been on and the adventures we had and we were inspired by this because we were in a new place and we were on an adventure and that inspired us to talk about our old adventures then like I'd say something and Kristen would add to it and we just kept getting more and more excited and like wait a second this is we can do this. We can we can tell these stories. We got a lot of stories we can tell. As soon as I finished a sentence, Kristen would come out with something that was the perfect thing to say. Then I would say the perfect thing. And then it just mm. turned into this project that you're holding in your hand now. But that, that just felt like, yeah, everything was going exactly the way we wanted to when our energies were perfectly aligned and and it's just an idea that neither of us could have came up with alone. Like we had to do it together. And it, yeah, it really felt like a communal effort where everything was aligned for us. 
there's something different. And Christine, I don't know if you've had the experience and Mike, maybe you have too, where you're sitting down to write a song and the, the whole thing just comes out, you know, maybe it's writing on a napkin in a diner. Like you hear these stories of it's just everything kind of comes together. And that's not to say that the projects that take five years are less authentic or less in your flow. It, you know, it, it just is a different process, but I did an art show a few years back. It was actually during the pandemic as well. And it was called Local Pay It Forward. And so I looked at a number of small businesses across the province that it was a hard time for everyone to, you know, entrepreneurs were struggling. And there were a lot of these businesses that I like their stuff. Like I, I want Anna and Zach pants. I want, you know, whatever these things were that I, the businesses that I was drawn to. So I did a collection of paintings that were inspired by these locations. Maybe it was the palette of their logo or just something about them. Sold the paintings and with the money would go and spend it all at this store. So I got to buy all this cool stuff and it created this great synergy and I was on the news and all these things, but it was a fully formulated idea when it came to me. Like it just was like a lightning rod of, start to finish. This is exactly how it's going to look. These are the places I want to do. This is how I'm going to market it. This is how I'll spend the money. And I think when you have those ideas that just feel so easy, it, it helps you feel like you're in alignment. Like, yes, I'm meant to be an artist. I'm meant to be doing this. Like, look at this cool thing. I was just able to invent out of nothing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was just a good example of, you know, when you're onto something, you know, when you have a good song lyric, or, you know, when you've got a good piece of marketing material or an opening band, like there's so many examples of just that sense of knowing and connection. So we try to follow our nose, I guess, when, Mm -hmm. when those little moments arise. I love it. Can I tell you a story? Uh, (laughs) Yes, of course you could tell me a story. Yes. I don't want to, I mean, I was like, Oh, I don't want to take too much of their time, but fuck. Yeah. Um, You probably wouldn't remember this, but uh, this is the first time I ever talked to you. uh Uh-oh. And it was at the ECMAs. I think it might've been the second ECMAs I ever went to. It was in Moncton. Oh shit. Did I ruin it for you? No, no. no. (laughs) And uh, an asshole. Oh my god. So uh, I was playing. You know those shows like they have. uh, It's like free to the public. It's in like the lobby, the hotel. It's kind of a shitty show where Mm -hmm. you go and play a half hour or something, and there's just people walking by, and maybe someone will stop and listen. But anyway, it's pretty shitty show like you you don't do it if you're doing good in your career (laughs) so i would do it i would do i would do it i know what you mean though yeah um, so i was i was kind of just the town here was a kind of just started and we were getting ourselves out there and i was i was playing one of these shows and again the hotel lobby it's two in the afternoon is never the most fun but (laughs) i i went up and i played my set and whatever it was it was okay nothing nothing great but it just didn't feel awesome you know like yeah or the 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 western is uh, not not where you're gonna get your big break but I uh, I got off the stage and you and Dale were there and you you stood and listened to the whole set and you came over to me afterwards and you just were so complimentary you told me how you really liked the songs and my voice and. Aww. Jeez, that was so much from you guys because I, I knew who both you were and what you were doing. And uh, it just uh, was such a nice thing for you to take the time to, to come over and say say nice things and, and be attentive to, to what I was doing. So uh, it was uh, really, really meaningful. And uh, I certainly appreciate it. Re- appreciated it then and still do now. I, uh, I'm glad to hear that I was uh, not rude or um just an asshole obviously you caught my attention and i wouldn't have said those things if i didn't mean it and i i i'm actually surprised that i to hear that i stayed the whole time because i'm like someone who's like always on the go hard i'm it's hard for me to like if i really like something i will stay and listen and i will i want to tell that person because i know what it's like right like 
yeah. playing a set, especially with not many people listening. And, and I also have experienced the whole, you never know who's going to be in the audience, who's going to give you an opportunity or like, you just never know. And sometimes it's nice for someone to come up and say that they like what you did. It means a little, in the moment, especially like, I don't know, like you, your confidence isn't sky high. I have meant <laughs> that. And to hear, yeah, those positive words from you meant a lot in, in the moment. Well, thank you for saying that. I know you've got multiple websites, but I'm going to tell everyone to go to mikeandkristen.ca. I'm going to post the link because yeah. that's where you can, you have so elo- eloquently you know, clearly, crisply explained what you do together yeah. and individually. You've got the book, you've got the great podcasts everyone's going to want to listen to. Um, Mike, you've got your music and your studio. Christian, you've got your art, you've got your joint creative endeavors. I mean, you guys are a, a collaborative machine. I'm very impressed and very happy for you both. We were chatting last night. I was like, she's so cool. And like, I already just feel at ease. I, like, We don't know each other well, but just the way that you present and show up publicly, at least, you know, from what I see, it's just, you're very easy to be around. And I remember, Mike, you said something like, I think you had hosted Music Week maybe one, one year. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you nailed it. What was the comedian's name? That, oh, that is hilarious that you don't remember Steve Patterson, but you remember yeah. I hosted? Because I didn't, listen, that was not a shining moment for me. I was not <laughs> in, grounded. That was my first hosting experience. And I, th- I was like overconfident. You guys were good. And Steve was so pro and hilarious and amazing to work with but i think i i remember being backstage and they were like christy he was like uh, can you say this this and this and i'm like no i can't i am entirely scripted and i can't just go like off right now i have like what's it called red light syndrome uh or like i have serious anxiety sometimes when i'm not prepared like i can't i have to like really rehearse for things. So it's, um, in any case, I'm glad you remember that. That was a blast. And yeah. thank you for saying that, Kristen. I feel the same way about you too, which is why you're going to come overnight sometime. We're going to cook for you. And what else will we do? Well, uh, maybe just... you do a Ouija seance. <gasps> you fucking kidding me. I love the Ouija board and i have tarot cards and game. We have all kinds of games. Okay. So we're set. Yeah. Send us the Google Calendar and uh, I, uh, we're there. I made a Ouija board when I was a kid <laughs> and uh, they said, well, you have to have blood on it. <laughs> to make no. It, to make it legit. So me and my brother, oh, we don't got to get blood. So we <laughs> went into the fridge and found a pork chop. So we, we squeezed his like, pork chop blood onto the Ouija board and rubbed it in. So, bring that. Yeah, yeah bring that. Thanks for listening to A Chat With Heart Podcast, produced and written by me, Christina Martin, and co-produced and engineered by Dale Murray. Check out Dale's website, dalemurray.ca. The podcast theme song, Talk About It, and I Don't Want to Say Goodbye to You, were written by me and recorded by Dale Murray. You can find my music on Bandcamp and all the places you stream music. Visit my Patreon page to become a monthly or yearly supporter of this podcast and my music endeavors. If you're new to Patreon, it's a membership platform that helps creators get paid. Sign up at patreon.com backslash Christina Martin. I would love it if you had time to share, rate, leave a review, and subscribe to A Chat With Heart on all the places you listen to podcasts. Wishing you, my little heartbeats, a great day.